Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. As many of you probably will have known, London's third newest bus route commenced operation today, being the SL5. The SL5 operates between Bromley North Station and the London Borough of Bromley, before finishing in Croydon Town Centre in the London Borough of Croydon. The route passes through Bromley, Park Langley, Eden Park, Monk's Orchard, Shirley, and East Croydon, before terminating in Croydon Town Centre. I think this route is one of the more underrated and under-the-radar routes on the Superloop route. So I hope you will enjoy this video, and if you do, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video, as it massively helps me out when you do. And anyway, come with me as we travel back to Bedlam on the SL5. The SL5's first incarnation came about under the number X119, which was the root number tossed about when the Superloop scheme was announced on the 28th of March 2023, promising that these routes would form improvements to the outer London bus network due to the ultra-low emission zone expansion that followed in August of the same year. Whilst much of the SL5 is new territory for express bus routes, quite a bit of the SL5's current route existed in various express forms years before, which I will be covering in this video. In August of 2017, the London Assembly Transport Committee called for an increase in the number of express bus routes in outer London, which then led to the development of the Mayor's Transport Strategy in March of 2018, which suggested the introduction of a cross-Bromley express route operating between Bexley Heath and Beckenham Junction via Bromley. I'll get back to that later on in the video when it comes to referencing a few points of my own, but an idea for a cross-Bromley express route has been floating around for quite some time. As the initial numbering suggests, the SL5 was designed to provide an express alternative to the 119, which currently operates between Bromley North and Purley Way Colonnade via Bromley Town Centre, Hayes, Coney Hall, West Wickham, Shirley, East Croydon, South Croydon and Wadden. The 119 currently operates with Enviro 400 EVs 24 hours a day on an every 12 minute headway. The introduction of the SL5 unlike with other routes such as the 34 and 183 when their Superloop counterparts were introduced, didn't see any changes made to the frequency of the 119. Although given the 119 and SL5 do deviate from each other quite a bit from Bromley North until Shirley, that would have been a bad idea, as it would have meant those who live in w Hayes and West Wickham, as well as those on the solo section of the 119 through Wadden, would have seen less buses per hour as a result. The SL5 is currently operated out of South Croydon Bus Garage by Arriva London, and controversially uses 12-year-old Enviro 200 examples off fellow Route 289. The Enviro 200s don't have a refurbished interior, although they do have USB ports, which are definitely very handy. However, given the SL5 is currently operated on a one-year contract, were they really necessary if these Enviro 200s will be disposed of next year? I guess they might make sense if they were to travel transfer to other Arriva operations across the country, but who knows. The SL5 has seen plenty of express variants operating along its current line of route in previous years, so let's cover the three most recent. The 725 and 726 are the more obvious ones to start off with, as they both travelled from Bromley to Croydon. The 725 was the first post-war orbital route addition to the Green Line network, which proved to be successful. It ran between Gravesend and Windsor, and the frequency soon enough was doubled as far as Dartford. The route became very successful, so much so that the route had to be converted to low-height double-deckers in order to sustain the extra demand. The 726 came about in 1977, which is now part of the SL7, taking on the 725 journeys that ran via Heathrow Airport. And whilst both routes had seen structural changes on both outer ends of the route, which I will likely cover in another video, the route between Croydon and Bromley was very different to what we see on the SL5, where instead of running through Shirley, they instead took a route through Addiscombe, Elmer's End and Beckenham. Much of the routing now has similar links offered by the Croydon Tramlink, where frequent services operate from East Croydon towards Addiscombe, Elmer's End and Beckenham Junction as well. There's also another ex old express route that the SL5 parallels, which is the short-lived X30 that operated between West Croydon and New Addington via Shirley Park as an express variant of the 130 when it used to run into Croydon. The route no longer exists, having commenced operation as a descendant from the 130B in 1987 as a few peak time journeys before, coming, before becoming its own in 1993 with its own schedule and no longer being reliant on the 130, although due to the introduction of the tramlink, it was swiftly withdrawn in 2000. 
I need a photo of the um, Astel 5 towards the end of the day anyway. Now, let's, see, let's move on to the route structure and the areas that the SL5 serves, shall we? The SL5 starts at Bromley North Station, a bus station located just north of the town centre where the majority of the routes that terminate within Bromley terminate. One of the selling points of the SL5, other than it providing faster journey times between Bromley and Croydon, is that it would allow for interchange to up to 38 other routes along the route. In Bromley North, these include the 208 towards Orpington and Lewisham, the 227 towards Crystal Palace, the 261 towards Locksbottom and Lewisham via Lee, and the future SL3 towards Bexley Heath, Abbeywood and Thamesmead. The 126 and 261 from Bromley North, as well as the Southeastern Shuttle Service towards Grove Park, would also provide connections to the final Superloop route that will be introduced, being the SL4 from Grove Park to Canary Wharf, providing connections across the proposed Silvertown Tunnel into the Docklands. The SL5 then progresses into the town centre, which is home to the Glade Shopping Centre from Bromley South Station. The town centre has a large retail area, which has a catchment of 1.3 million people and is a popular shopping destination due to the various retailers that exist within the town centre. Bromley Town Centre has been identified as one of the major metropolitan centres in London by the London Plan, and was identified as the fourth largest shopping destination in London in 2005 in terms of millions of pounds spent only just falling behind the West End, Croydon and Kingston. The Glade Shopping Centre was established in October of 1991, and its name was derived from a competition amongst residents on what to name it due to the area's wooded nature, which was apparent when travelling on the SL5. The shopping centre is home to 135 different stores inside the shopping centre, however a restaurant terrace was added to the shopping centre in July of 2016, which houses five more restaurants. There was definitely a feeling of hustle and bustle about in the area, so the SL5 will be an excellent addition to the area as despite the decline in brick and mortar retail due to the rise of online shopping, the area still seems to draw in massive crowds of people to visit the area and to spend money, contributing to the local economy. This is also where the decision to put single-deckers on the SL5 really started to feel ill-thought-out, as boarding there meant by the time we had left, the bus was standing room only as all seats had been taken. The next stop on the SL5 we passed was Westmoreland Road, Barnfield Wood Road, which is located just outside the suburb of Park Langley. In all honesty, there was not a huge amount to say about that stop, although there are a few woods nearby that might make for some nice walks in when the weather's nice, such as South Hill Wood which we directly passed, and Kingswood Glen slightly further away. Nonetheless, the stop is located right by a shopping parade, and the stop offers connections to the 138 towards Coney Hall and Hayes, the 162 towards Beckenham Junction, and the 638 that offers connections to Chemnall Technology College, Nis, Footscray and Sig. We then turned right onto Hayes Lane and progressed onto the next stop on the route, which was the Chinese Garage. Known as a well-known landmark, the Chinese Garage was the winner of the best petrol station competition organised by the Daily Express in the 1930s, but was also voted the most unusual service station or garage in 2001. The garage was built with a design made by Edmund B. Clark in the style of a Japanese pagoda. Although the building has long been known as the Chinese Garage by locals, it wasn't until 1989 when the building obtained the name the Chinese Garage and was previously known as Langley Park Garage. The building's inspiration is believed to come from the family who established the Chinese Garage, being the Bucknells who, re who regularly travelled to Asia and the Far East, so it would make sense that it would have inspired their construction of the station. Whilst the building is no longer a petrol station, before it became home to a Tesco Express and a Majestic Wine it was once part of a Kia and Peugeot dealership. Nearby, there is Kelsey Park which passengers can alight for. Kelsey Park, once part of the Kelsey Manor estate, has a playground, a cafe, a few tennis courts, a mini golf place, as well as a fat lake surrounded by woodlands, which one may enjoy walking around, especially if it's nice weather. There's not a whole lot else to say about the area, other than some development popping up just outside the Chinese garage which would no doubt add more passengers onto the SL5 towards Eden Park or Bromley South for the train. There's also a shop by Kelsey Park named Rishi News. Anyway, on to the next stop on the route. We then arrived at Langley Park School on South Eden Park Road, which serves the area of Eden Park. Eden Park was once rural farmland up until the 19th century when mansions started to be constructed within the area, 
which continued into the 1900s as the area gained Eden Park Station, that opened at the end of May of 1882. The area contains a few shops on the high street which include a few cafes, a Sainsbury's and a Toby Carvery, although as you traverse further down Upper Elmer's End Road, you will likely run into the closed Mazda dealership. Eden Park Station, which is situated on the Mid Kent Line, offers a fast and frequent service towards Catford, Ladywell for Lewisham Hospital, Lewisham, the City, and the West End of London. Services are operated every 15 minutes by South Eastern, although only two trains per hour serve Lewisham, with the other two heading directly into central London from Ladywell. The next stop on the SL5 is Bethlehem Royal Hospital, a psychiatric hospital more commonly referred to as Bedlam. To some of my older viewers, the phrase Back to Bedlam might have rung a bell, as that is the name of the 2004 James Blunt album Back to Bedlam, which contains his songs You're Beautiful and Goodbye My Lover. The name Bedlam refers to uproar and confusion, and the hospital gained the nickname due to the horrible conditions that the patients staying in the hospital were subjected to. In 1930, the hospital moved to the current site which is located atop the land that used to be part of the Monk's Orchard Estate. The land was up for sale in 1920, and while some of it was sold off, the land now known as Monk's Orchard was sold off in 1924 to the, land, to the London Corporation, and some of the land was delegated to the current location of Bedlam. The hospital contains various departments including the National Psychosis Unit, an Adolescent Unit, and an Occupational Therapy Department. There is a museum located on the grounds of Bedlam called the Bethlehem Museum of the Mind, which I had a nosy about that included the history of the hospital and contains extensive archives from Bethlehem Royal Hospital, Morsley Hospital, Bridalwall Hospital and Warlingham Park Hospital. The museum features works by artists who have suffered from mental health issues, and given it's a free admission into the museum, if you are within the area I would strongly recommend you visit. The hospital grounds also see a park run every Saturday morning. We then progressed further along the SL5 to Monk's Orchard, where the route leaves the 356 which offers links towards Elmer's End, Birkbeck and Lower Sydenham. Monk's Orchard doesn't really have a lot there, other than an array of shops and a Baptist church. The area is more a place where one would interchange I'd say, where passengers can interchange for the 194 and 198 towards Shrublands and the 119 and 194 towards West Wickham, which is just down the road. West Wickham is also an area served by the Mid Kent Line and had a pretty similar origin story to Eden Park, where it too started out as a small village until the 1900s when the area saw rapid development, helped by the presence of fast trains into the city and West End serving the area. Monk's Orchard and West Wickham are both affluent suburbs of London, and in the case of West Wickham especially, are really nice areas to visit in my opinion. We then arrived at Shirley Library. Shirley dates back to the early 14th century, and the name is believed to mean Shire Cleaning, which is presumably referring to its pre-1965 position on the Kentish Shirey border. The area Shirley originated from being a small hamlet, which in the 18th century had a large mansion built in it called Shirley House, which was then later bought by businessman and MP for Abingdon and Berkshire John Maberley. Shirley House was then converted into, into the Shirley Park Hotel in 1912, and like with many other areas situated along the SL5, the area saw massive development in the early to mid 20th century, and became the residential area that it is today. Near the Shirley Library bus stop, there are a selection of shops and cafes for punters to go to and enjoy. The Shirley Library bus stop is so conveniently placed between Upper Shirley and Shirley Oaks, so residents living in those areas can easily access the new SL5 and make good use of it. As for what is in the area, if you take a stroll down Spring Park Road, you reach St John's Church, which was built in 1856 due to the local community growing, and it replaced a small chapel nearby. Further down into Shirley, you can see the Shirley Windmill, which is a Grade 2 listed tower mill in Shirley that was built by Richard Allen in 1854. The windmill was listed in 1951, and was at one point threatened with demolition due to the construction of the John Ruskin School. However, due to the mill's listed status and strong public back backlash, the windmill still stands. In August of 1996, the windmill was set to be converted into a museum and had external works relating to its sales of the mill and the external structure of the mill in the following years. As for what else is in Shirley, there is the Pinewood which I travelled through to reach the windmill, and there are also a few pubs which include the Sandrock pub and the Surprise Inn. 
and also the Addington Hills to go for a walk on just off Upper Shirley Road. Finally, we reached East Croydon. East Croydon offers interchange for tramlink services towards New Addington, Wimbledon, Elmer's End and Beckenham Junction and has a national rail station offering frequent railway services towards London Bridge, London Victoria, Uckfield, Brighton and other South London and Surrey destinations. East Croydon is a massive transportation hub, featuring a bus station just around the corner and it being the 20th busiest station in the UK, the busiest non-Zone 1 or Zone 2 station in London and the 10th busiest station in total in London. At East Croydon, you can expect to change for the 64 towards Thornton Heath and Addington, the 197 towards Peckham, and the 466 towards Caterham and Addington Village. You also have Box Park located next to the station, which brings modern street food, fine dining, craft beer, and refreshing drinks to South London. Just around the corner from East Croydon Station is where we reach the SL5's terminus, which is Croydon Town Centre. Croydon Town Centre is one of the largest commercial districts in Greater London, and has an extensive shopping district which helped bring in £350 million in 2011, only trailing behind the West End, Shepherd's Bush, Stratford and Kingston. The area is home to the Central Shopping Centre and Whitgift Centre, which the SL5 passes by on its way to Croydon Library. I'll cover more about Croydon in another upcoming video, however the SL5 crosses the A23 which shuffles its way through the town centre. We then reached the Croydon Library, the third most used public library in the UK. Croydon Town Hall, which is located just alongside the library, was opened on its current site in 1895 over what was the old Central Croydon Railway Station. The new town hall was designed by Charles Henman in the old red brick Victorian style, and survives as the London Borough of Croydon's headquarters up until now. Council officers and the courts and the judicial facilities move out of the building in the late 60s, and in the late 90s the interior of the building saw an extensive refurbishment, so that now unnecessary parts of the building no longer used for council meetings can instead be converted into the library, Croydon Clock Tower and the David Lean Cinema. Now. What was the service like to use? The SL5 out of the three new Superloop routes was the busiest one despite only being a single decker compared to the double deck SL1 and SL10. Although throughout much of the day, I saw buses with standing room only, which was basically the case on the SL5 we got leaving Bromley Town Centre towards Croydon. The service is currently restricted to single deckers due to low trees on South Eden Park Road, so I wonder whether TFL, especially as the SL5 is only on a one year contract, will eventually cut the trees back to allow the route to be upgraded to double-deckers, to allow for higher capacity and to account for any future growth the service sees. The route is quicker than the 119, especially between East Croydon and Monk's Orchard, where the SL5 acts as an express variant of the 119, 194 and 198. The route also acts as an express variant of the 162 and 358, for journeys from Bromley towards the Chinese garage in Eden Park, and I suspect by acting as an express variant it can also relieve any overcrowding that these routes may see. The SR5 also acts as a much faster alternative to the 194 between Eden Park and East Croydon, as the 194 loops around West Wickham and Shrublands. However, like I mentioned in my Grove Park to Bromley North Line video, when it comes to linking Bromley and Croydon together, directly, is the single-decker SL5 really the better option? I think an extension of the Croydon trams into Bromley and onto Grove Park would be a more desirable alternative, even if it would face some challenges constructing it due to the gradient leaving Shortlands towards Beckenham Junction, the low bridge at Shortlands and the demolition of Bromley North Station and likely the significant disruption to the bus station situated next to it. Now, what do I think the service could see? As I mentioned earlier, Double-deckers are an obvious step in the right direction given how heavy loads appear to be on the first day. I think loadings-wise, the SL5 will be extremely busy from East Croydon during the peak hours towards Shirley and Monk's Orchard, as passengers will see that it is an express variant of the 119, 194 and 198, so much so that it might require its own bus stop in East Croydon bus station to handle the crowds. Extensions-wise, like I've mentioned with all other Superloop routes, I do wonder whether it could be at some point merged with the SL3, 
as this would offer more orbital connections to places further afield such as Sidcup and Bexley Heath, and when merged would be a similar length to the SL7. Bromley North is also a, a bit of a squeeze at times when it comes to available stand space, so this would be removing the need for two high-frequency bus routes to stand inside there. However, reliability would be a concern, so I think it's advisable that perhaps the two routes are kept separate for now. Another extension that the SL5 could maybe see, which would deviate from the circular shape the Superloop currently has, could always be an extension akin to the 119A and 119B that operated alongside the 119 in the 1970s, which would be an extension from Croydon Town Centre to Thornton Heath. The benefits of this would be a faster link from areas like Shirley, Eden Park and Bromley North to Croydon University Hospital, although it could be argued that London Road has enough buses as is, and the SL5 passengers travelling from afar would just be able to change onto a 198 in Shirley or East Croydon, which would provide that round-the-corner link, albeit slightly slower. Other than that, I'm not too sure on what extensions the SL5 could see, as a merge with the SL7 is un extremely unlikely due to traffic conditions, and the SL7 being the longest route in London already. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and sorry for the extremely late upload. Have you used the SL5 yet? And if so, what do you think? What amendments to the service would you suggest? I always take great interest in what you all comment and so I will be intrigued to hear what you all have to say. Anyway, that's it from me folks. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share this video as it massively helps me out you do. And anyway, see you in the next video.